Vanessa, you guys are not, um, you know, having a message on a movie is not anything new to you guys, right? We've done it before. Brad, I know what you're saying. Not the sermon on invaders from Mars again. Now I remember. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it. That's right. Good job, Amy. Good job. This was a movie made in 1953. And I was about a year old when I went to see it. No, I'm kidding. I was a year old at that time, but I didn't get to see it. About, I don't know, nine or ten years, nine or ten years uh, old, I guess it was. It was on TV. So I watched it with my dad. Now, you have to understand, little Gary back then, it, number one, was cowboys. Everybody that grew up about the same age I am wasn't cowboys the thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. And number two was Invaders from Mars. It was science fiction. I love science fiction. You know? And I loved I love this movie. Let me anybody see it by any chance? Alright. I got somebody that saw it. Outstanding. Will you tell us about the no, I'm kidding me. I want to tell you about what the movie is about. It's about this kid, about my age at the time, who sees this big flying saucer come down on Earth and land in a big sand pit and then kind of buried itself into the sand and disappeared. And this was right behind the kid's home. Later, he sees one of his neighbors doing a moonlight stroll through the sand pit like we always do, right? And the neighbor gets sucked into the ground and disappears. Later, the, the kid goes out and he's inspecting the sand pit. And guess what? He gets sucked down into the sand. And what he finds there is that underground are these tunnels and this I'm going to read it how I put it. Two tall, slant-eyed, slant green humanoids take him through the flying saucer through the tunnels. Pretty scary, right? See, the thing is, the, human, the humanoids were planting these crystals in the back of people's head back here, and through it they could control their mind because they wanted to find out some secrets of an Air Force base that was close by. Later on, the kid escaped because the army found out about him and they blew a hole in one of the tunnels and he was able to get away through this hole that they blown in the tunnel. That night, as I was sleeping, guess what? I had a nightmare about that movie. And as I was flopping around on my bed, my leg got caught between the wall and the bed. Now you know what's going on up here. I was being sucked in that tunnel, right? So when you get sucked in a tunnel by you know green-eyed, slitted humanoids, what do you do? You scream for help, right? So I, be I began screaming for help. My father come rushing through the house into the room to save me. But I didn't see my father. Guess what I saw? <laughs> I saw this guy, okay? So to get away from him, I went up under the bed while he was trying to grab me and went out from the end of the bed and went running through the house screaming with my, well, with the humanoid in hot pursuit, my dad, but the humanoid was in hot pursuit. He chased me into the kitchen and in there I jumped underneath the dining room table at which time he tried to reach under and grab me. I was too fast for him. I was out running through the house again screaming. Because all I could see in the darkness was a humanoid. When I got back to the house, to, uh, to my room, there was the big hole in the tunnel. 
also called a bedroom window. <laughs> and we have air conditioning. And uh, the window was open. Nothing but a bug screen. I knocked over a bedside table, broke one of my mother's good lamps, tore down the curtains, tore down the blinds, and I was pushing the screen out to go out head first through the window, and I would have dropped about 10 feet down to the ground if I had done that. But as my dad came into the house, he turned the light, I mean, into my room, he turned the light on, and he came up and grabbed me. With the light on, I was able to see that it wasn't a humanoid, that it was my father that loved me. The light transformed what was going on, what I was seeing. Now, I was, last time I stole, told a story like that, I was asked later, was that a true story? <laughs> and it was, and this is a true story. Just ask the way you can ask my dad. He's passed away, so you have to pay my word for it. You could ask my sister, yeah, she, well, I don't know if she was there then. I think she had already, yeah, my brother's a liar, he keep believing. <laughs> Life here on earth, though, can be like my dream, can it? When we are in darkness, we can't see the face of Jesus. We can't see the light. There are scriptures that tell us this tells us that Satan uses darkness to hide the face of Jesus from us, to keep us from salvation. And today I want to talk to you about the transforming power of the light of our world, of Jesus Christ. The first scripture is John 12, 46. And it says, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me not remain in darkness. John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the perfect image of God. We recently celebrated the birth of Jesus just a couple of months ago when the light of the world came to us, the true miracle of Christmas. The story actually started long ago and it was foretold in the New Testament, or in the Old Testament, like in Isaiah 7:14. Where it says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. If we know history and we know read the Bible, we know that the Jews did not believe in Jesus. The Jews were looking for a Messiah. They were looking for a strong earthly king. You have to remember that the Jews were underneath the Romans. So they were wanting someone like had happened in the Bible in the past to come and liberate them, to take them out of Egypt, to save them, to deliver them from the Roman oppressors. They wanted to, take, to again form a great independent Jewish nation here on earth and again have the king of the Jews. Today, many Jews still do not believe in Jesus. They may say he's a good man, he's a prophet, but he's not the son of God. The message in Judaism is only for the Jewish people. But the thing is, Jesus was not sent here to use his power to save the Jews. Jesus, the light of the world, was sent here to transform the world. He was sent here for a conversion of the heart rather than external behavior. He was sent here as a light for everyone, not just for the Jews. We know the stories from Christmas of when the light first arrived. The poor, the shepherds who follow the light, who were Jews. 
We know the story of the wise men. Have you ever thought about the fact that the wise men were not Jews? More than likely, they were not Jews. But yet, they were following the light from the very beginning. Then there's the story of Simeon at the temple. One of my favorite stories. Told in Luke 2.25. It tells us of Simeon, just a, an ordinary guy who loved the Lord, who believed what he read in the scriptures, who went to the temple on the day that Mary and Joseph was there with Jesus as part of the Jewish cleansing ritual. And it tells us, the scripture tells us in there that Simeon took Jesus in his arms and he made this statement. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. A lot for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So we're told from the very beginning <laughs> that Jesus is here for all of us. He's here for everyone. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you truly believe that? The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Say that with me. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, Dumber than a hammer, smart as a whip. The light of Jesus can transform you. The story of Zacchaeus is one that we're all familiar with. I always think of Zacchaeus as a children's story, you know, from back in Sunday school or maybe vacation Bible school. But actually, the story of Zacchaeus is a story of transformation, of a life changing encounter with Jesus. And you know the story, right? Jesus was passing through Jericho. Zacchaeus, wealthy, tax collector. He wanted to see Jesus, but he was short, could not see over the crowd. So the scripture tells us that he climbed a sycamore tree. When I read this, I always thought, well, why does it say sycamore tree? And I've asked some people about that, and some have told me, well, sycamore tree had limbs that grew low to the ground, so it just show how short he was. But then this one lady, she had the right answer. She said it goes with the song. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all sing that with me? Come on. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. <laughs> Watch the cues. <laughs> Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. The, cry, the crowd that was following Jesus were not happy. They said, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. <laughs> so Zacchaeus said, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of all my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus' response was, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He came to be with the sinners. Zacchaeus was hated tax collector. He collected money for the Roman government. He was a sinner. He was greedy. He was dishonest. But it didn't matter how bad he was. His life was transformed by the light of Jesus. You see, he no longer valued the things of this earth. He was changed forever. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Say it with me. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. The story is told in John 4. is early in the morning. Jesus and the disciple had arrived on the lake after Jesus had calmed the storm, another great story. When they stepped out on the beach, 
they heard a terrifying shriek. A naked wild man came running to them from the graveyard. His body was covered with scars. His hair and beard were matted and tangled. He had a wild, demented look. He had B.O. He howled. He slashed himself with stones. His strength was such that no human man could hold him down. He was possessed. But when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him and shouted at the top of the voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? Jesus responded, What is your name? He said, My name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus said, Come out of this man, you poor spirit. Jesus spoke, and Legion was a different man. He was transformed by the light of Jesus. As Jesus was getting into the boat to leave, the man came to him and begged him, Let me go with you. But Jesus wouldn't let him. Instead, he told him, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. All the people that lived there were amazed at what, what had happened. When we think of legions, we think of the power, a strong earthly power, the legions of the Roman army, seemingly insurmountable odds, but not for the light, not for the transforming power of Jesus. Because you see, he is stronger than the legions of this world. Again, it does not matter what you have done in the past or what hold this world has on you. The light of Jesus Christ can transform you. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Say it with me. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. The story goes that John Wesley was riding along on his horse. <clears throat> Whenever a robber came up to him, and said, your money or your life? John Wesley emptied his pockets of the few coins and allowed the man to go through his saddlebags. And as the man was about to leave, kind of disappointed, John Wesley said, stop. I have something more to give you. My friend, you may live to regret this sort of life you're living. If you ever do, remember this. The blood of Jesus Christ God's Son cleanses all from sin. John Wesley rode along praying. Years later, at the close of the Sunday evening service, a man asked to speak with John Wesley. Guess who he was? He was the robber. This was the man who had robbed him years before and is now he was a well-to-do businessman. But more importantly, he was now a child of God. You see, God had used the words of John Wesley to show him the light, to transform him. The man said to John Wesley, To you, dear sir, I owe it all. But John Wesley responded, Not to me, but to the precious blood of Jesus, which cleanses us all from sin. John Wesley, a transformed follower of Jesus, sharing the light with another. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Say it with me. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. There are many other stories of people being transformed by the light of Jesus. If you look at the scripture, you can read about the woman at the well in Samaria. The woman caught in adultery where Jesus asked them to cast the first stone who was without sin. The thief on the cross. The conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Even the disciples. And there are other stories after that. If you've ever read the story of John Newton, a slave ship captain, who later wrote Amazing Grace. He was transformed by Jesus, by the light. 
Jesus has the love, he has the grace, he has the power to transform lives. But you know, sometimes we forget this, don't we? We talked about this morning in, in our Sunday school class about how sometimes we go up and down and that we forget that we have been transformed by the light. Sometimes we need to rediscover our commitment to Christ and to the light of the world. I recently read a book from, written by Matthew Kelly. It's called Rediscover Jesus. And I'd like to share a story from this book. Stories about Paul, who was a businessman, who had the biggest meeting of his career. And the meeting was a huge success. He couldn't wait to get back home to tell his wife and his boss about how well the meeting had went and how well it, he, was, he had done with it. As he and his team were leaving the office in Brooklyn and running out, there happened to be a cab waiting, which was very unusual in Brooklyn. So he ran to, his whole team was running to the cab, and as they did it, they pushed over a small produce and it stand. As Paul was starting to get into the cab, he stopped, and he looked back, and he, he couldn't get in the cab. And his team members were saying, you have to come now. We're running late already. You'll we'll miss your plot. You need to come on and get in. But he didn't. He said, go ahead. I'll catch up. He went back and found the woman who ran the stand was crying. He helped her pick up the fruit and vegetables and put the car back up. As he was doing this, hundreds of people passed by, but no one offered to help. He paid her for the damages. And as he was about to leave, the woman asked, Mr., are you Jesus? <laughs> he responded, no, why? And she said, well, when I heard the fruit falling, I prayed for Jesus to help me. Paul could not get a cab. He missed his flight. And he had stayed in a hotel that night. And as he reflected on the day, the question kept coming back to him. When was the last time someone confused you with Jesus? And after reading this, I had to ask myself, when was the last time that someone confused me with Jesus? When was the last time that my light truly shined for Jesus? I watched Kareem during the, my, this little light of mine. She had her phone light on. And I thought, no, I didn't see you were behind me. Okay, a couple of y'all did. <laughs> but I thought, when is it that we let our light truly shine like that? Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And as Christians, we need to let everyone see the transformation that Jesus has made in our lives. And we need to always remember the light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. Say that with me. The light of Jesus Christ has the power to transform lives. If you don't have this light today or your light is running dim, it's time to rededicate yourself to that light, to shine for him through the transforming power of the light of Jesus Christ. I'm going to close today with prayer that was in Matthew Kelly's book. So if you'll join me in prayer. Loving Father, here I am. I trust that you have an incredible plan for me. Transform me, transform my life. Everything is on the table. Take what you want to take and give what you want to give. Transform me into the person you created me to be so I can live the life you envisioned for me. I am holding nothing back. I am 100% available. How can I help?